what they are asking you guys to do is factor the polynomial completely. And they give us one factor. Now, if this is a factor, so here's your polynomial. They're saying this is a factor. If it's a factor, that means if we apply division, we know that the remainder is going to be 0, right? That factor evenly divides into this polynomial. Now, let's look about something else. What do we know about factoring completely? Well, let's take the number 12. If I was going to ask you to factor completely number 12, of what we actually call factoring completely is called prime factorization. And to do prime factorization, we use, the, we use the factor tree. And you guys probably remember this like early back in the day. You break down a number into two factors, and then you break it down completely into a product of its prime factors. So factoring a number completely, 3 times 2 times 2 is a list of the prime factors of 12. Do you guys agree with me those are all factors? Yes. And the product of them still gives you 12, right? So this is factoring completely a number. So what they're asking us to do is factor completely a polynomial. Okay? So what do we, how do we do this? Well, again, let's think about it. 6 is a factor of 12, right? We know 6 is a factor of 12 because it divides into 12 two times, right? It factors into there evenly two times with the remainder of 0. But it goes in there two times. So if I do 6 divide into 12, the answer is 2, correct? And what that tells you is 2 is also a factor. So how many times one factor divides into another factor, that answer, which we call the quotient, is also a factor. So if this is my factor and I want to find all of the factors, what I can do is use division. Now, since my factor is linear, I can prefer to use synthetic division. So I'll do x plus 5 equals 0. So I set my factor equal to 0, and then I'll solve. So x equals negative 5 is my 0. Right? Does everybody agree with me? Yes, no, maybe, so? OK. So I take the 5, and I'm going to apply synthetic division. So in this case, I just take the coefficients. I'm not missing any. So I do 1, 3, negative 13, negative 15. So now, remember, you bring down the first one. That's your freebie. Then you multiply on the diagonal, add on the vertical. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. Negative 13 plus 10 is going to be a negative 3. Negative 3 times 5 is going to be a positive 15. That gives you a 0. So does that prove that x plus 5 is a factor? Yeah. Yes, because it evenly divides into it. But what is the quotient? What is the answer? That's your remainder, constant, linear, quadratic. So the answer is x squared minus 2x minus 3. Correct? But not only is that an answer, that is also a factor. Now think about it. If 6 divides into 2, 12, or 6 divides into 12 two times, can we take our two factors? What happens when we multiply our two factors? What does that give us? 12. So if I multiply this factor by this factor, it's going to give us our polynomial back, right? So I multiply this times x plus 5, that gives you back your polynomial. However, so this is what, um, before, so here's the factor form, just like how I factored 6 and 2. However, did I, com did I is 6 and 2 completely factored? The number? No, you can factor further using prime numbers for a number. Can I further factor this? Yes, of course you can. That is what we call the completely factored form. All I did was take my two factors, and I factored this further, just like I did with a number. Except instead of numbers, we're using polynomials. Does everybody see that? Anybody have any questions? No questions. So that's all you had to do for your homework. For those numbers, for those problems, that's all you had to do. However, I'm going to go a little bit step above. What if I asked you, instead of saying why well, I want you to factor it completely, what if on the test, right? Because this isn't what the homework was, or that was what the homework was. But what if on the test I said, I want you to find all of the zeros? What if I said, I want you to find all the zeros? Well, 
If you factor it completely, how do you go from factors to zeros? You set it equal to 0. Instead of setting it equal to y, your function, you set it equal to 0, and then apply the 0 product property. Therefore, you have x equals 3, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 5. So your solution set would be 3, negative 1, negative 5. Right? That's all the zeros. And let's double check that with the fundamental theorem of algebra. I have three zeros. How many solutions am I supposed to have? Three. So this checks out, right? It works. Now what if I asked you to graph it? What if I said, hey, what if the question on the test was, here's the polynomial, and here's one factor. Why don't you, why don't you tell me what the graph looks like? Well, since these are all real zeros, they're x-intercepts. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is kind of goes into what your test was on, or your quiz that you guys last took. Right? So since they're all real solutions, they're x-intercepts, then what's the end behavior? Well, since this is odd and the leading coefficient is 1, which is positive, based on the leading coefficient test or your notes, the graph is going to fall left, rise right. Then let's look at the multiplicity of all my zeros. What is the multiplicity of each zero? 1, right? So therefore, they cross at every single zero. So the graph would look something like this. Yes, no, maybe so? I'm going a little bit farther ahead, but I want you guys to really, really understand this. I also want to make sure that you guys have this polynomial. I'm going to come back to this answer. Could you guys make sure? So number 21, could you guys, whoever, make sure that these answers are written down? Because I'm going to ask you guys again then. 3, negative 1, negative 5. Just make sure everybody has those for number 21. 3, negative 1, and negative 5. Make sure you guys have those as the zeros. Because that wasn't part of the problem. So I just want to make sure somebody has those written down for me. Because I'll go back to them. Does that make sense?